Welcome. This is a short tutorial on how to use RevCalf in the Abergroth study. This movie has chapters, so you can navigate to chapters relevant for you. Before you can access the Abergroth RevCalf, you need two-step verification on your Liu ID. In the comments section below, you find information on how to do this. Once you're in RevCalf, it looks like this. And on the left, you have your menus and you have, for example, project bookmarks with links, project dashboards with documents that are relevant, and on the data collection, your actual data. Under data collection, you have record status dashboard. This is your overview. It contains all the patients included in your clinic. Each time point in the study is separated into what RevCap calls events. At each time point, there, is an in, there are instruments attached in an exclusion patient characteristics prom pre-op and questionnaire pre-prom, for example. Each instrument can have a color, orange, green, or red. This indicates the status of that instrument. If it has no color, it means the instrument is empty. Red means the instrument has been saved, but is still incomplete. Yellow means the instrument is complete, but not yet verified. And green means the instrument is complete and it has been verified. See verification as it has been signed, that it's correct. The record status dashboard gives you a fast overview of what still needs to be filled in and or verified. Adding a new patient. A new patient can be added either through status record status dashboard or add edit records. Add edit records, click the green button, add a new record. And you see a record is created with all the instruments at all the events, screening, surgical procedure, discharge, and so forth. The first question you need to fill in within is in the in and exclusion criteria form. Here you fill in the study ID that is given after screening. It always consists of the three letters of your center plus a number. We use branching to guide you through the form. That means you do not get questions not relevant for this patient. For example, in the patient that I just filled in the in exclusion criteria, this patient is a part of the RCT, the randomized control trial, but maybe I made a mistake or didn't type it right. I said, oh no, actually this patient is breastfeeding. I'll get a question pop up saying, but you already said he consented for the RCT and that is not relevant for you anymore. So can I delete that answer? And you click, yes, you can. Once you've completed the form, you indicate the status of that form. Your answer here changes the color of the icon in the overview. You have three options. Incomplete means the icon tastes red. Unverified means the icon becomes yellow. And complete means the icon becomes green. And you mean it, you've verified it. Who can verify forms? Everybody who has a RedCap access can fill in the forms, but only certain people can sign the form. On the project dashboard here, you find a document that says, I have to shape my changes that I put in, that indicates with green, who can verify. So the PI at the hospital can verify all the documents. A participating doctor can verify the medical uh, medical documents but not serious adverse events log or adverse events logs and also not protocol deviation and end of study only the pi can do that a research nurse can verify whether or not the prom has been received which randomization code has been assigned and also the post-operative prom rescreening rescreening is done when the patient is part of the randomized control trial Remember, if you very recently screened this person, no rescreening is necessary and you can leave this form empty or just indicate that the in and exclusion criteria still apply. Yes. And the consent is still valid. Yes. Remember, if the patient was menstruating, so I can indicate it here in the in exclusion criteria, the patient has menstruated, then you will have to do a pregnancy test before operation. If you go then to the rescreening, you will be prompted to give information about the negative pregnancy test. Some instruments or forms 
you can fill in multiple times. For example, if multiple adverse events have happened. For example, here during surgical procedure, I already have two adverse events that have happened. I can press the, press the plus button and add a new event. Once I've added these events, I can navigate here and go back to previous events. Or if I want to add a new one, I can either at the end of the form say save and add a new instance. All adverse events and serious adverse events needs to be followed up during the duration of the active participation of the patient. This means up until wound control. Therefore, when, when you open adverse events at wound control, you've been prompted with this question. Have all IA A, adverse events and serious adverse events that have been recorded followed up? You either answer yes or no. Follow up means that you go back to each adverse events and determine what the status of that adverse events is. Has it been resolved or is it still ongoing at the two week follow up? If a serious adverse event is detected, the sponsor needs to be notified. You do this by sending a text or email to the sponsor. In addition, you fill in the serious adverse event log. By saving this form, the, no the sponsor is also notified. Remember, it's more important that you notify the sponsor in time, even if you do not have all the information. This form can always be complemented at a later stage. At two years, we ask patients to fill in the post-operative patient reported outcome measures. These are the same questions the Swedish participants have received after one year. In RefCap, there are two forms related to the patient reported outcome measures. In the instrument called two-year PROM post-op, you can indicate whether the PROM has been filled in digitally on paper or not. Or not. In the form questionnaire post-op PROM, the actual questionnaire is filled in. There are two ways to send the questionnaire. First is via email containing a link to the survey and second by sending a paper version. We recommend to send a digital version first and if you do not get any reply send a paper version. Sending a digital invitation. Once you're in the questionnaire post or from you go to survey options on the top right. You click on it and you click on survey access code or QR code. Here you find a link to the actual survey and a code. And this code needs to be in your email to the patient. Alternatively, you add a QR code, which a patient can scan and then fill in the questionnaire. On the left, in project bookmarks and in project dashboard, there is a link to a template mail here and here. In this mail, here you find the text you can use for your email to the patient. Please make sure that you replace the yellow marked areas. The code that you just found in your survey can be pasted here. Or you can add the QR code here. Sending a paper version. Please use the documents in your investigated side folder for the pattern, as the red cap printout are not very patient friendly. This document is found on the folder three in the ICF. There, you can also find a cover letter to accompany the questionnaire. Make sure you amend it to your site. Once you've received the paper version of the PROM, you can fill in the results in REDCAP. Make sure you save the paper version in your CRF folder. As At two and five years, we ask you to go through the medical records to see if there are any relevant findings. This is indicated in two forms. First, there is a follow-up two-year or five-year form. In this form, you indicate if there has been any findings. Fill in this form before you fill in the medical chart review. Remember, each finding needs to be registered separately in the medical chart review. So if a patient has been reoperated due to loosening and there is also information in the medical journal that indicates a suspicion of PGI, this means that the medical chart review needs to be filled in twice, one for the loosening and one for the suspected PGI. The same holds true if the patient has been operated multiple times. 
each operation has to be noted separately. So for example, one medical chart review has been filled in and I can add, I can add another one. Now I'm at the number two, the medical chart review for a diagnosis of PGI. Once you fill the medical chart review, you can click on the bottom, you can click save and add new instance. The protocol deviation form is filled in when, for this patient, you have for some reason deviated from the prescribed protocol. For example, the follow-up two week was not performed, or a nurse that mixed the treatment drug, so who was unblinded, had contact with the patient during the wound control visit. The end of study protocol is filled in if the patient concluded its five years follow-up or for some other reason is excluded or has dropped out of the trial. Please note that if the patient has died before the five-year follow-up, you still have to fill in the end of study protocol. Trick number one. In some cases, you want to print out a paper version and have the doctor Print, uh, fill in the paper version of the instrument, which later on you can then fill in digitally in RedCap. Remember that that paper version that the doctor has filled in is your source data and has to be saved in your CRF folder. To print out a paper version, for example, for the surgery report, you go to the surgery report instrument and on the top you have the option to print out a PDF. You can print out all data forms or the top two either the data form for this instrument without any information or with saved information. If you print it with saved information on the top, you will find the record ID for, for that patient that you used to print out the form. If you print out without any information, this information is not there. My suggestion would be to print out the data, the data entry form with saved data. In this case, you're sure that you get only the questions relevant for you. For example, if this is a cohort patient, questions about the use of antibiotics, antibiotics in the bone graft are added to the form. If it's not, those questions will not be there. Make sure that the person filling in the form signs the document and you save it in the CRF folder. Tip number two. Occasionally, you feel a part of a form and you want a doctor or somebody else to add certain information. This can be quite complex to know for the other person to know where he needs to fill in something. For example, I filled in most of the information in the surgery report, but I want the doctor or somebody else to fill in this question. I can assign that by generating a bubble. If I click on the bubble, I can say I've an, I open a query and I assign it to a person that needs to answer that query, in this case, myself. Once a query has been posed, that person, if he logs in, in RedCap, can go to Resolved Issues here, Resolve Issues, and there it will get a list of issues that are resolved that he needs to look at. Under Filters, you can indicate the issue that are assigned to you. This one, for example, is assigned to me, so there is one unresolved. Once I click on here, I come to the question that I need to answer. I see the bulb here in yellow and I can answer it. Once I've answered the issue, I can go back to resolve issues and click on comment and say, I done it. Make sure you fill in something and you can close the query.